But this man have someone also to offer. Christ offered his life once. He paid for the sin of the world. He became sin by him dying because remember the wages of sin is death. If you sin, we deserve death automatically. Doesn't matter how big is your sin, how small is your sin, how minute is your sin. Sin is sin in the eyes of God. Of course there's grievous sins, but all sins can keep us from heaven. And so we have a merciful mediator, Jesus Christ the righteous. So we can come to the Father like we read in John 14. You come to the Father in my name and I'm going to because Christ never sinned, he's going to intercede to the Father in our behalf. Going again to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. It says in Hebrews 5, 5, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he says in another place, thou art, my, thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, was strong and crying in tears, and to him that was able to save him unto death, and was heard in that he feared. <clears throat> Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. So Christ was made a high priest forever, even before he came into the, you know, the womb of Mary. He was ordained to be a priest. Jesus did not set himself as a priest. Oh, I'm going to be a priest. No. The Father chose him. He was destined to be the priest. He was destined to be the sacrifice. He was destined to be the mediator between the Father, because we brought the law, and between us, the sinners. Now let's say something else. Well, maybe I should proceed and say another comment. Okay, I want to talk a little bit, I'm going to put a little pause and talk a little bit about um, an ex-Jesuit priest by the name of Charles Chikuni. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He has two excellent books, which is one, The Woman, The Priest, and The Confessional, where he talks a lot about those confessional boxes and the suffering of the woman. And there's another book by Charles Chikuni, which is called 50 Years in Rome. Wow, that book is very, very excellent too. Uh, and he talks about the experiences that he had as a child, how they are told what exactly and how precisely you are to confess all your sins, a little child, and come before the human being, sinful, wretched, high priest or priest, earthly priest. And he talks about the experience, how he was like fearful because they were told, you have to tell us everything you've done wrong. So the Charles, as a little kid, he starts going to the priest. He suffers so much physically, mentally, spiritually. And when he goes there, he starts um, trying to confess his sin according to the ritual and all those things. And he's trying to confess his sins. And the priest keeps on saying, what else? What else have you done? And then he tells him some things. He was mocking him because the priest had, was, had a lisp. He wasn't speaking correctly, if you know what a lisp is. If not, as your parents would tell you. And he was confessing. And then all of a sudden, afterwards then, the priest starts asking him questions of things that a little boy his age didn't know what it was. Didn't know how to do it. Didn't know that wickedness. So this system of the Catholic Roman institution of that confessional is from the pits of hellfire. That's what it is. They want to know secrets, not only from little kids, not only from women. They want to know the most wicked sins that people have done. It's like they want to hear that sin. As a matter of fact, um, some years ago, more than seven years, more than probably ten years, um, or maybe eight years, I met a guy who he loved to hear the people tell him their sins. And that's wrong. And we're going to read that what the Bible says about that. And so the little kid, his mind was, how could I say? What would be the best word here for me to say? His, his pureness that he had was destroyed a little bit. Enough to destroy his gentle, childlike, no sin mind. And he asked him questions, things that he wouldn't know what they were. 
and that the priest opened his understanding. Now I know what they are. Well, he never knew about it. Why do they have to do that? And not only to him, he also talks about this true history, about how the priest also has very evil questions to little girls. And so that system is just bad. It's bad. Why, why are they doing that? Why are you guys allowing your children to go to those places? Why? And um, we have a lot to learn from the Word of God, to know, to keep us from that Babylonish way. Okay, now let's move on, uh, talking more about Christ. Hebrews 4.16, we left about Hebrews, so let's go to 4.16. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find help to... Um, may help... Pardon me. <coughs> may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we have our Father, we could come in the name of Jesus, and come in any time of need. Anything, any time of need. Matthew chapter 11, I'm just going to quote it. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy. Christ invites us to come to him. But nowadays, that was in the times of Christ, but nowadays, he invites us to come to the Father in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 1811 <clears throat> Matthew 18 11 it says for the son of man is come to save that which was lost Jesus is not only a high priest a mediator uh, he's also a savior he came to seek and save that which was lost see another doctrine of the Catholic Church that I don't know if you're aware of is that the father is evil he's not loving and kindness and so then we have the virgin mary who is the mother of jesus and she intercedes for us according to the catholic and dogma of the teachings of the catholic roman church that she intercedes for us and she tells her son son please forgive him and there is not one single scripture that says any teaching like that in the bible as a matter of fact um, in the dark ages and even in the time of this man that I'm telling you about who came out of that institution but he was in Rome for 50 years he says that they were not allowed to read the Bible <coughs> the Bible was not allowed and he talks about if you I recommend that book especially for adults um, he talks about how they're not allowed to read the Bible and that uh, once he once there was a Bible in the library and he read it and he um, was seeing the difference, the light of heaven and the teachings of the college of the Jesuits was the light or the darkness of hell. Why do they not allow them to read the Bible? Oh, because their sins are going to be exposed. Their dogmas are going to be exposed. Their sacraments are going to be exposed. And then what happens? As a matter of fact, I myself was also Catholic, was, W-A-S, was a Catholic, but now I am a Seventh Adventist, praise the Lord. And um, I remember every year, it was, we had a little booklet, and it was always the same material, year by year. Nothing new that we learned. Always the same little booklet. Of course, they put it in your year, 2018, 2019. Uh, but it was always the same material that we learned. It's like we're being brainwashed every time. The same book, the same book, the same book. Wow. So there's so much false doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church that you need to learn to escape from those things. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Revelation 18, come out from among them. They are Babylon. They are one part of Babylon. There's three parts of Babylon. The first part is the Catholic Church. I'm not going to say they're in levels, but the Catholic Church because they claim to be Christian and they have paganism amongst their doctrines. That's what they are, paganism Christianized, which is still paganism. And then another one will be um, the, the false Protestants, those who are seeking after the papacy to go and obey their mandates and those who are seeking the papacy in their doctrines. 
That's another part of Babylon. Another part of Babylon is for all those unbelievers, all those atheists, Hindus, Chinese, Mexicans that are in the unbelievers, all of those who have not picked up a Bible and read it. Those, all of those, and if they have, they reject it, they're still Babylon. Okay, so let's move on. Speaking so many things. So then let's go. We said Matthew 8, 11, where I already quote that verse. So Matthew 18, 11, we, we read about Christ being the Savior. John 12, 47, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John 12, verse 47. Just get a little stuck in there. It says in here, and if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him <clears throat> not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Same information. Same thing. Romans chapter 5. We're doing a Bible study, children. We have to use our Bibles. <clears throat> we need to know. Remember, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, beware any man deceive. The Roman Catholic Church is about deceiving human beings. It's a deception in all their doctrines. They have truth mixed with error. What happens if you put truth in error? It's still error. So that's what they got. Be careful, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Romans chapter five, let's go there. Verse eight and nine. It says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being not justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. How do we save from the wrath of the second death, which is the lake of fire? Through him, through Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. It says, now we're ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. We then, it says in chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, we then as workers together, with him, beseech you also that ye receive not that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Receive the grace of God like it is. Go and be reconciled with God. Go and confess your sins to Him. He is the only one that has pardoned. No human being on this earth has pardoned to forgive sins. Now the book says that in James chapter five. Let's go there. James. Oh, there we are. James. Chapter 5, verse 16. And it says, Confess your faults one to another. Listen. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The, the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The Bible counsels us Confess your faults one to another. Get rid of the pride. Be in peace with your brother and sister. Confess. Be right. But the Bible doesn't tell us go and confess your sins to your to your brother or sister or whoever it is that you offended. No. Our sins. Who do we offend with sin? Number one. Let's go there. Let's look at this picture here. When we come, if you were to come to the priest, which are, the Bible says, no. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that. Did you offend the human being underneath this veil? Or did you offend the God of heaven and his law of Ten Commandments? Because when we sin, we break them all, not just one. So then why do we confess to a human being? If you offended the person, then you go and confess your faults, apologize, make peace. 
And also it goes the other way too. If somebody offends you, pray about it. For the perfect moment to talk to that person, make peace and tell them how they offend you. But this man didn't sin against the priest. He sinned against God. Why are they confessing to a human being? Can't understand it. Except that it is evil. Amen. Let's continue. We know that God so loved the world. The Father is the one that loved us. And he made provision for his son to come and die for us. Now let's talk more about Christ, 1 Timothy 2.15, and his priesthood. 1 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 1, pardon me. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and Lord Jesus, which is our hope. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our anchor. Jesus is our Savior. No human being has those titles, and if they do, they're antichrist. Let's continue. First Timothy 2 5 now. Let's read there. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, and the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. There's one God, that is the Father. There's one mediator, which is Christ. We need a mediator. We can't just come to God without Jesus. No. But Jesus died for us. He said, let's, let's put an example of a prayer. Let's put this little child. He's praying. And he needs God, Jesus Christ to be interceding before the Father. Like in the court system, you have the judge, you have the sinner, which is the offender. And so then, what happens? The law accuses him. He broke the law. But what happens? Jesus Christ died for him. So if he repents, he confesses sin, and he has God's grace not to do that again, <clears throat> through the grace of Christ and abiding in Christ, then he doesn't have to experience the, the punishment of the law. I'm giving so much explanations. I'm going to let the Bible do more of explaining. Acts 16.31. Let's go to the book of Acts 16.4. 1631. It says, And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. Nowadays we have those famous Protestants who love to be rich through the gospel. Woe well unto them. And what do they do? They do masses of meetings and they tell you they yell with their hands, they have those music with the drums. Stay away from drums. And what happens? Oh, receive the Lord and you shall be saved. And they preach and they say, Receive the Lord. And people are like, Yeah, they're all emotional and all that drama. And what happens? That's how. That's how they just leave it right there. But notice in the verse that it says here, Yes, receive the Lord Jesus Christ. But where it says, They spake unto him the word. They spoke to them the truth, the word of God. They were educated to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Nowadays, it's all sentimentalism. We're departing from the living word. This is our doctrine of our faiths. All of our doctrines got to come from this book. All of them. If they're not found here, what are we going to do with them? What are we going to do with that false confessional system? We got to get rid of it. Don't do it. It's the part from it. Romans 10, 9. We're going back to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, and that God raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. So not only are you still supposed to believe, but also you're supposed to believe in God, that he's the one that can save you only. If you come to a man, 
If you look to the left hand where the man is confessing in the Catholic way of confessional, of course they do boxes or little rooms. Here I just put that because that's all I had available. 